You might think pirates spent their days swaggering across the decks shouting air and hunting for buried treasure, but their biggest enemy wasn't the Navy, rival crews, or even gold-starved mutinies. Nope, it was something far grosser, more basic, and frankly, way stinkier. I'm talking about how they turned their own urine. Yes, you heard that right into gunpowder in the mid-1600s. Let me tell you, this wasn't just some pirate oddity. It was a life-for-death survival tactic wrapped up in centuries-old science and a whole lot of yellow liquid. And trust me, the solutions they cooked up were downright ingenious if you can get past the smell. So picture this. It's the year 1650 and you're aboard a pirate ship somewhere in the Caribbean. You've got a motley crew of 50 or so salty sea ducks, a few cannons aboard, and enough powder to shoot through a dozen enemy hulls if you manage your supplies well. Problem is, Gunpowder back then wasn't something you could just buy at the corner store or craft in a lab coat. It relied on something called saltpeter or potassium nitrate, basically the magical ingredient that makes gunpowder, well, powdery instead of just a pile of soot. The bad news, saltpeter wasn't raining down from the sky. Pirates had to find it, and that meant either expensive trade or wild scavenging in godforsaken places. When nature didn't cough it up easily, the pirate crew faced a problem bigger than running out of rum. No saltpeter, no bang, no boom, no defense. Here's where it gets wonderfully grim. Saltpeter can be produced from nitrates, which back then people discovered often came from the decomposition of organic waste in, other words, heaps of manure, decaying plants, and synopses of bad hygiene. You can guess where this is heading. These pirates figured out how to harvest it from, you guessed it, their own pea. It sounds like a terrible joke, but there it is, a yellow gold mine they tapped for their survival. Now, before you start thinking this was some sort of pirate version of a modern water treatment plant, imagine the conditions below deck. The average ship might have 63 gallon barrels rigged not for rum or water, but to collect liquid potential. To get enough saltpeter for one batch of gunpowder, a crew of 50 would need roughly 50 gallons of urine per day carefully gathered and processed over weeks. Pirates were essentially running a pea refinery on the high seas. Talk about ruining your fearsome reputation with something as undignified as, well, a collective piss pot. But of course, it wasn't as simple as tossing your morning routine into barrels and waiting for magic to happen. The problem was that untreated urine was nothing but a smelly cocktail of organic waste and urea. It contains nitrogen, yes, but not in a form that saltpeter-producing bacteria could immediately use. Also, the barrels had to be kept under specific conditions, with enough moisture but not too much, the right, temperature and most importantly, exposure to air, or else you just ended up with a fetid swamp of nastiness that no one wanted to touch except for desperate pirates. Let's just say it wasn't pretty. Early attempts to speed the process were, frankly, disastrous. Pirates initially tried to mix fresh urine with salt and older waste, hoping to mimic the natural decay process that produced nitrates. Bad idea, really bad idea. One notorious attempt aboard the ship, Black Raven, left the lower deck smelling so foul that even the rats refused to scurry. The crew spent days sloshing barrels around, hoping for results, but instead, the barrels fermented into such a toxic stew that several crew members got sick. Spoiler alert. It didn't work. The captain had to enforce a quarantine of the urine barrels to the ship's stern, earning it the unflattering nickname, Foul Hole. And if that wasn't enough, the accumulated gases sometimes led to small explosions, caused by methane buildup, just what you want on a wooden ship filled with gunpowder. Then came the invention of the nitrating bed, essentially a primitive compost heap, but for piss, soil, and organic matter. Pirates would dig these shallow pits near their landing spots and layer in dirt, straw, and their collected urine. The nitrifying bacteria would get to work breaking down the nitrogen compounds into usable nitrates over 24 to 48 hours, sometimes longer. It was gross, slow, and took a lot of patience, but it actually worked. The twist? Pirates didn't exactly understand the microbiology behind it. All they knew was if they messed with the mix or didn't keep it moist, they'd get moldy sludge instead of saltpeter. Kind of a pirate's version of trial and error meets 17th century chemical engineering. Once the nitrate-rich soil was ready, it was sifted and soaked in water to extract the saltpeter crystals, a 
a process that could take several days and involved constant stirring to precipitate the saltpeter out. This slurry was then dried into a chunky crystalline powder, which when mixed with charcoal and sulfur, transformed into the deadly gunpowder we associate with those famous cannon blasts. Believe it or not, this homemade method was up to 70% effective compared to commercially produced saltpeter, which was no small feat given the conditions. One famous example of this method at work was the ship Queen Anne's Revenge under the notorious Blackbeard. Historical records show that during the summer of 1717, Blackbeard's crew resorted to makeshift saltpeter beds on shore in North Carolina. They needed fresh gunpowder badly after a skirmish with British naval vessels. According to accounts from the ship's log, they collected over 100 gallons of urine in specially designated barrels. Yes, they even had assigned piss collectors, a role considered one of the least glamorous but critical to the ship's firepower. The process took about three weeks, and while the resulting powder wasn't perfect, it was enough to reload their cannons and survive yet another naval showdown. Talk about resourcefulness or desperation, depending on how you look at it. But here's the kicker. Not only did converting urine into saltpeter ensure a steady supply of gunpowder, it also had a surprisingly beneficial side effect. The process of storing urine in barrels and composting it with soil inadvertently acted as a rudimentary sanitation method aboard pirate ships. Given that hundreds of sailors shared cramped quarters with barely any hygienic options, those barrels helped contain some of the waste that otherwise would have fouled the decks and living spaces. Of course, breathing near the barrels was still like sticking your head in a rotten egg factory, so it's not exactly spa treatment. The sanitation aspect might have saved lives by reducing the spread of disease from open waste, even if it made the ship smell like something a sea monster would spit out. Now, if you're thinking pirates were some sort of medieval chemists, kind of right, but mostly just trudging through desperation wrapped in trial and error, here comes the part that seals their place in the gross yet genius Hall of Fame. Since fresh saltpeter wasn't always guaranteed on long voyages, pirates learned to reprocess old gunpowder leftovers that had gotten damp or clumped stuff that sailors normally considered trash. They'd soak the old powder in urine and put it back into the nitrating bed to recharge the nitrates and purify the mixtures. This recycling trick increased their ammo reserves significantly. Think of it like a pirate's version of upcycling. Not exactly eco-friendly, but certainly cost-effective when your life depends on it. This reprocessing wasn't flawless, though. Sometimes recharged gunpowder was unstable or exploded prematurely, causing accidents. One cheeky legend talks about a prankster pirate who filled a barrel with recharged powder expecting a bang. But instead, it fizzled out with nothing more than a sad puff of smoke and an overwhelming stench of rotten eggs and vinegar. The crew's laughter died down quickly when they remembered that running out of real gunpowder meant getting boarded, and nobody wanted that. So, to sum it up so far, pirates in the 1600s had a bigger problem than just low treasure maps or weather. They had to deal with the critical question of how the hell to make gunpowder without reliable saltpeter shipments. Rather than sitting around crying over spilled rum, they turned their bodily waste into a weapon production factory, literally turning their pee into power. Through smelly barrels, compost beds, and a lot of bad smells followed by even worse experiments, these sea bandits mastered the art of chemical recycling before it was cool or sanitary. The whole ordeal was as disgusting as it was ingenious, but without it, the age of piracy might have fizzled out quietly without a single boom. But wait, this story doesn't end with just urine and saltpeter. What about the other amazing, too strange to be true methods pirates used to keep their powder dry and ready? Or how they dealt with the explosive dangers on wooden ships that could turn a fight into an accidental self-combustion? And what exactly was the role of their cooks and ship surgeons in this whole chemistry circus? Stay tuned because the next part dives even deeper into the wild, stinky, yet surprisingly brilliant science that kept pirate cannons firing and reputations intact, at least until breakfast. Now, back to those pirates and their trusty gunpowder. If you thought just turning pee into saltpeter was the end of the story, buckle up, because that was only half the battle. You see, once they managed to produce this elusive white crystal, the next nightmare was keeping the gunpowder dry and ready to rock despite sailing through humid, 
salty ocean air that would make a sponge look like a desert, gunpowder with even a hint of moisture, basically useless, more of a fancy black paste than the blazing boomstick pirates depended on. And without boom comes walking the plank or losing your ship to a less smelly enemy. It was a legit crisis. Now, fresh gunpowder could cost up to a month's loot when you managed to trade, so wasting it on a moisture attack was like throwing gold doubloons into the sea. Naturally, pirates had to get creative and gross again. Cue the infamous powder monkeys, those sticky-fingered little helpers running cannons during battle, but more importantly, caretakers of the gunpowder. Pirates quickly learned that storing powder in barrels made of wood alone just sucked up the moisture like a sponge left out in a rainstorm. So how'd they deal with it? One failed experiment involved lining these barrels with animal skins soaked in salty sea brine, thinking the salt would repel moisture. Spoiler alert, it didn't work. Instead, barrels started to smell like a barnyard mixed with a fish market, making sailors gag so hard some nearly passed out mid-cannon reload. Turns out, salt is great for preservation, but lousy as a dehumidifier. Lesson painfully learned. The real genius move was something so simple you'd wonder how it wasn't obvious. Keep those powder barrels constantly covered and sealed, yes, but packed with a layer of charcoal, and sometimes a sprinkle of dried herbs like thyme or rosemary. Why charcoal? Pirates didn't know the science, but we do. Charcoal absorbs moisture and odors, effectively acting as a natural desiccant. Think of it like the pricey silica gel packets we throw into shoeboxes today. But pirate addition means a whole lot of dusty black powder and a whiff of campfire. Adding herbs. That was a savvy bonus, masking some of the putrid smells wafting from those forsaken barrels. Talk about ruining your fearsome pirate scent with a touch of time. A particularly successful barrel design was documented on the Satisfaction, captained by Henry every in the 1690s, where they stored gunpowder in double-layered wooden casks wrapped in pitch-soaked canvas and lined with charcoal dust. Logs mention the powder stayed dry through storms that could have drowned lesser provisions. Not glamorous, but effective, and gross enough that only the bravest powder monkeys volunteered for duty near the storage room. Apparently, a faint note in the ship's journal states, smell like the devil's armpit in a volcano, which is totally understandable. But sealing powder wasn't the only battle pirates fought against explosions aboard wooden ships. Picture this, hundreds of barrels filled with gunpowder, sailors running around with open flames for cooking and lighting, and decks slippery with spilled rum and sweat. Add in unpredictable weather and you've got a recipe for disaster. One notorious failure happened aboard the Royal Fortune, Bartholomew Roberts' flagship. During a particularly rough storm, lightning struck the mast, uh-oh. It ignited a stray spark in the powder room, blowing a hole in the side and sending poor Roberts and half his crew flying into the water like cannonballs themselves. Let's just say bad ideas like storing gunpowder near cooking fires were crossed off the list pretty fast after that. The solution. Pirates instructed cooks and quartermasters to make gunpowder storage a no-go zone for all flames, assigning powder sentinels to guard the barrels with strict orders to snuff out any candles or lamps. These sentinels were kind of like the ship's firefighters, though their tools were bucket chains of water and leather bellows to intently blow out sparks. Sounds low-tech, but on a ship with a 60-man crew, safety precautions literally meant survival. Without them, Every skirmish could have ended with a fiery boom bigger than the cannons could produce. And speaking of cooks, here's a little-known role in pirate life that was way more critical than dishing out salted meat. Ship surgeons and cooks were often involved in the gunpowder manufacturing process, especially in handling the saltpeter extraction. Who would have thought these guys were part chemists? Because the process of soaking, sifting, and refining saltpeter wasn't exactly safe or clean, Ship surgeons had to manage the health risks of working near waste and harsh chemicals in cramped quarters. Some records from the early 1600s mentioned sailors complaining about madness and skin irritations, possibly caused by ammonia fumes escaping from urine barrels and nitrate beds. This isn't your standard hospital gig. It was hazardous duty with a side of stench and possible poisoning. One documented case aboard the Adventure Galley captain by William Kidd in 1699, revealed that the ship's surgeon developed a strange rash on his hands after too many hours spent stirring nitrate-rich soils. 
Luckily, he recovered, but many weren't so lucky, and stories of crew members developing respiratory issues or eye irritations became common. We tend to romanticize pirate life, but imagine daily working conditions. Eyes watering from fumes, faces swathed in cloth rags to filter the stench, all while dodging flying debris during naval battles. Pretty harrowing for a bunch of sea bandits who looked more like party animals. Now, here's where pirates flex their twisted brilliance. They didn't just wait to collect fresh urine and soil to extract saltpeter. With their relentless need for gunpowder, pirates started using night soil from port towns. That's a polite term for human waste collected from city streets to supplement their nitrate beds during prolonged voyages. Think of it as pirate city composting, but with a much more pungent smell. This waste was packed into barrels or shallow pits, layered with ash and straw to speed up nitrate formation. The trick was carefully balancing moisture and aeration, so the right bacteria could do their magic transforming ammonia into usable nitrates. Without that, you just got a swampy, smell-filled mush no one wanted near, kind of like cleaning your gutters but with maggots. One famous and gross story involves the infamous pirate Madame Mary Reed. While assembling a makeshift nitrate bed on the blasted shores of Port Royal in 1720, she reportedly ordered local waste barrels brought back to the beach to feed their saline compost. The local colonists weren't thrilled, but pirates didn't have the luxury of politeness. They needed gunpowder and they got it, even if it meant hauling barrels so rank the rats followed them off the beach in protest. The process reportedly took up to two weeks but yielded enough saltpeter to keep their blunderbusses firing during island sieges. But converting pee and human waste wasn't the only bodily fluid put to work. Believe it or not, some pirate crews tried harvesting nitrates from the waste of their ship's animals, goats, chickens, and even their beloved rats. Animal dung, especially from herbivores, contains nitrogen compounds that can, under the right conditions, form nitrates usable for saltpeter production. Pirates figured that any resource left unexploited might mean the difference between firing a cannon or being boarded and sent to Davy Jones' locker. Unfortunately, animal waste was even harder to manage than human urine because it tended to be drier or too dense, making bacterial action less effective. Still, desperate times called for desperate measures. For example, the pirate ship Fancy, under Henry Every, experimented with mixing goat dung with urine-soaked straw in makeshift nitrate beds during stops on Madagascar's shores. The resulting nitrate yield wasn't great, about 40% as effective as human-derived saltpeter, but it was better than nothing when they were running on fumes. It also meant the crew had to endure even more revolting smells, which led to a surprising social consequence. A new group of dung diggers was formed, essentially disgraced crew members tasked with handling this foul business while others held their noses and wrote crude limericks about them. Classic pirate humor under duress. So what's the big picture here? Pirates were master recyclers of everything from human waste to old, damp gunpowder, showing a resourcefulness that could make today's zero-waste advocates blush or gag. Their methods weren't clean or pretty. In fact, they were downright brutal on the senses. But when your survival depends on turning your own pee into weapons of war, aesthetics take a backseat to ingenuity. They created an entire chemical production line aboard tiny, creaky wooden vessels where space was tight, air was foul, and failure meant death or capture. The hilarious irony is that while these seafarers complained about the stink, they were pioneering biochemical recycling and sanitation centuries ahead of their time. The urine barrels served double duty as waste containment, their nitrate beds as primitive bioreactors, and their powder storage tactics as early moisture control systems. In the messy mess of pirate life, necessity truly was the mother of invention, though a rather smelly, grimy, and sometimes explosive mother. So next time you think about pirates, don't just picture the flashy hats, parrots, and chests of gold. Think about barrels full of piss, dirt-soaked compost heaps, and charcoal-lined bins where actual science happened beneath the swashbuckling swagger.